Hey guys, Spencer Kaufman here with How To Video Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to add a power cord to your new dishwasher. So this is a KitchenAid dishwasher, a manufactured a division of Whirlpool, at least that's who provides the manual. Uh, the owner's manuals and installation instructions are uh, very, very terrible in a lot of dishwasher models. So hopefully... Uh, this process will be similar for you no matter what dishwasher you have. Uh, the first part is locating the electronics panel or the wiring panel wherever the power needs to go for your dishwasher. Uh, typically you need to lay your dishwasher on the back as we have here and then remove the access panel from the front. So we are going to do that now. Okay, once you have the access panel removed, there is a little uh, wiring box right here that you'll see, and you need to remove the screw. That's a different size bit, so if you have a couple of hex bits, uh, you can remove them with an impact, but when you tighten them, make sure you do not use the impact, or if you do, do it very, very lightly. Okay. Once you have that opened up, the next thing you'll need to do is add a, a relief or a strain relief, which is like this. Uh, that'll go right in that hole there, so we are going to put that in. Okay, make sure that is finger tight. Uh, the dilemma with this will be uh, making sure that your cord, that you can tighten those screws on the back. And you see here, we have this white plate. This is in, in the way. And so some of them, there's a screw that's loose already. Some of them are removable. And so you can pull this whole thing out with a couple of tabs. And then that would enable you to tighten these screws here when the cord is in. So if yours does not have a removable uh, ability like that, then you would need to remove this box, which looks like it's a tab here, and then you could lift it up and tighten those screws to hold the cord in there. So either way, you need to be able to tighten those screws. Uh, we'll come to that in a little bit. The next thing we need to do is get the power cord. So here uh, we have the power cord. You'll have to buy this in a a kit separately from the dishwasher. Usually the kit includes everything you need. It's about 30 bucks. Uh, so from there, uh, the dilemma we have is now we need to know which wire is the black wire, which one is the white wire. If you look closely, you can see the middle one is the green wire. In addition, there's some text along here that tells you that's the ground. Uh, you don't know which is which because if you say, oh, the left of the ground or the right of the ground uh, could be either way. So there's a way to figure this out, and it's really very simple. What you need to do is plug this end into an outlet. So do that. And then make sure you're not touching any of those wires to anything because now that it's plugged into an outlet, one of these wires is hot, which means it has a current going through it. So if you touched that wire to something, you could pop a breaker, or if you touched two wires, the ground and the hot, you're going to get shocked. So the thing to do here is to get one of these handy uh, tick tracer tools and see which side is the hot side by holding down this button and then going up to it. So you can see there, that side's hot. Let's flip it over. That's the neutral. So this is the hot side. So now that we know that, we're going to unplug the wire, or the cord, and then we're gonna mark that with a black marker. Just draw it all the way down so that you know that that is the hot side. All right, and that is how to tell whether the right or the left of the ground is hot on 
your dishwasher or any electrical cord. So now that we know that, we are going to insert this and then we'll screw in the black to the black and the white to the white and the neutral to the neutral. But there's not enough room. They didn't really give us much room on this. So we need to strip out these wires a little bit more. And to do that, you're going to need a wire stripper. So we've got that. Uh, these have been soldered, so uh, you're probably going to end up ripping off that solder, which is no big deal. Uh, check your gauge. It looks to be about a 12 gauge wire. And so we'll use that. Give it a little bit. All right, so we've kind of stripped some of them. We're going to pull those two loose wires out of there. If we can. There we go. All right, now we are ready to begin. So we can remember that's the hot because we marked it black. So let's enter this right through here. Again, everything is unplugged, so you're not worrying there. Now what we can do is give enough space so that we can wire all that up and have a little extra room. So something about four inches would be plenty. If you want, you could do a little less. We're going to make sure we've got enough. And then what I'm going to do is tighten up those screws so that way we're not uh, fighting with keeping this cord in. So get a Phillips screwdriver and get under here. Tighten up those screws. Right, then it also helps if you take a pliers and hold this and give that a good crank to help that be solid. You could also use a, a vice grip or a pipe wrench or something else to get in there. So once you have that, now it's a matter of wiring up the black to black, the white to white, and the green to green. So this one is our black. Now when you wire these, uh, they've, they've soldered this end to kind of hold them together, which is really, in my, my case, almost annoying because I like to wrap the wire around it. And right here you can't because that can't be bent, which is annoying to me. I, I like to have it curl around the screw so that as I tighten the screw, it pulls the wire around it. So I'm just going to hold it like that. So you can see there, I've got it held around. And then what I'm going to do is tighten this screw. So now we'll do the white wire. All right, now the middle one was the ground. So we're going to push that underneath. There's also a little tag you could remove. I'll show you. But it's sometimes very difficult to get the wire under there. If you struggle with this, what you should do is cut those ends off of the wire. Cut off the soldered ends. Then uh, braid them together. Just twist your, your end so that they don't all fray apart. Twist it and then wrap that end right around the screw and then put the screw in. Just when you're wrapping it, make sure you go clockwise so that as you turn the screw, it pulls the wire around. So here we go. We've got it all wired up just like that. Those are good. The final steps now are to replace everything that we took apart. So the first thing would be this. There's some kind of a drain hose here that we will have to figure out later in another part of the install. So we're going to put this back just like that. The next thing would be setting this back in here. So we got our front back. Now we got this and I'm going to use the impact so you can see about the tension to go. So we're going to put this in and right there where it stopped We'll go like one click and that's on, but it's not overly tight. So the next step would be to remember to add your insulation back. And that goes in there this way. Just 
like that. And then replace the front cover. So I know this has been a little bit of a long video, but hopefully it's helped you. If so, please comment below saying uh, how much of a help it was that really gauges me on what type of videos to make on this channel. In addition, uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the video as well. That would really help me. And if you could, hit that bell icon down there to be notified of future videos. As always, I appreciate your comments and your support. Uh, continue to do that and uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and click that bell icon to stay tuned for future videos. Thank you.